life of the party. I'm Amy Chamberlain, chef and owner of the Perfect Wife Restaurant and the Other Woman Tavern. Thank you for joining me in my virgin voyage here at GNAT. I'd like, you, I'd like to introduce you to my first guest. I have brought her here to show me how she makes her delicious grape leaves. The premise of my show is to pull recipes out of people that I've been dying for, that I've eaten at potlucks. And this is how I'm going to do it, is just bribe them by putting them on television. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ellen, are you ready for your debut? Ready. Come on up. <laughs> Ellen Russell. Well, to get to know Ellen a little better, I know her pretty well, but I think it's only fair that you know her almost as well as I do. I've prepared a few questions. Okay. Here they are. They're very serious. Hmm. All right, we're going to start out a little, a little light. Okay. I'm ready. Um, okay. A person that makes you a little nervous is coming over to dinner. Oh. What do you serve? Oh, God. Well, I guess uh, that depends on in what manner they make me nervous, <laughs> for one thing. <laughs> Let's say it's your... You know, is it like a, I'm trying to get a better well, job if, if or... Sean, yeah, if Sean didn't already... So if my mother in law his own yeah. boss, if he had a boss. Okay. I would say my easy, delicious go-to meal, if they eat meat, is to do um, roast chicken. I, do I slow thing. cook it. I do whole grain, wild rice, green beans, and... Or if they, I was really trying to impress them, I would do roasted root vegetables. Mm, <laughs> I like to put the carrots, onions, and celery right under the right. chicken. That would be my like extreme, yeah. look how impressive. Chicken lava. What are the three spices that you, you use most? And do you use them fresh? I think probably garlic is number one. Fresh and powdered. Yes, I like to grow it. I like to use it. I like to sniff it, smell it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything about garlic is delicious. I don't know anybody that doesn't like garlic. What else? Well, I do always have a garden, so I love fresh dill. Mm. I love dill and, like, eggs and tuna. You have and to pick that before it bolts because dill yeah. bolts like crazy. But it's so good, and mm. it's so uh, – it does. It's, but so so it, and it's great to dried, it? too, yeah. so that I would use that all the time dried. I use parsley because I grow it also. And parsley's in the recipe today. And that's so easy. I mean, I used to grow, when I worked for Amy at the restaurant, um, I grew so much yeah. parsley, I would bring it in. Baskets. You <laughs> like <laughs> Toto in a basket. Do you want to use this? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, parsley for sure. That's right. Is that okay. three? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Dill, garlic, and parsley. Yeah. What is your go-to item on a menu when you go out to eat? A year ago, my go-to item would definitely have been pasta. I can't. You know, I was like a major pasta lover, pasta eater, pasta maker. I would always, you know, especially like in a not quite as nice restaurant, yeah. maybe you kind of can't go wrong with pasta because like, how can somebody mess that up? A little cream, a little yeah, cheese. Yeah, exactly. However, I, um, about six, seven months ago, gave up gluten entirely. So <laughs> unless they have gluten-free pasta, I don't eat it. Is it good, gluten-free pasta? Um, it's okay. It's pretty good. I mean, it, especially, again, if you cook with it and, you know, put lots of stuff in it, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. And I haven't eaten regular pasta in so long that I'm over it. So, uh, so today, what would I eat? I would probably eat um, huge salad and any kind of chicken as long as it, it didn't have some kind of flour on it. All right, we're going to dig a little deeper into Ellen's life now. Oh, boy. Could you describe your sex life in culinary terms? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <clears throat> Earmuffs, well. children. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, it's probably like cream of wheat. <laughs> sometimes it's really smooth and perfect, and sometimes it's a little lumpy. And not gluten-free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I don't eat that much anymore, but. <laughs> Bad parody. Wait, wait, wait. Bad, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. You just spent four hours following a recipe that was in Bon Appetit. Oh you got God. all these 
fancy ingredients, you did all these cooking techniques that you hadn't really heard of before, you followed that recipe to the T. <laughs> and you were so proud of it. <laughs> you pull it out of the oven and you drop it and the whole pan breaks and everything <laughs> falls on the floor. What do you say? <laughs> all right, are you ready to cook grape leaves? I'm totally ready. Let's do it. Are you guys it. ready to cook grape leaves? Yeah. yeah. All right. Hi. 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 All right, let's cook. All right, show me how to make these grape leaves. Okay, so we're going to start today with a one pound jar. Now, Orlando's, you can buy them in a one pound jar and a two pound jar. To simplify for some people who don't want to, you know, make a ton, because you do have to roll a lot, um, we'll start with a small jar because I understand if you've never made them before, you're like, what? I want to taste them first. So we'll start with a one pound jar, which means we're going to start with one pound of ground beef. We're using Boyden Farm ground beef from Cambridge, Vermont. Um, and it's kind of important to use um, meat that isn't um, without a lot of fat. Like you don't want a 90%. You want more you 80 want 20? 85 or 80, yeah. Because um, some of the fat actually, you know, bubbles up and cooks for a really long time and really adds a lot of flavor. Your the flavor's in the fat. Yeah, and you're not actually, it's going to boil down it, out of the grape leaves, so you're actually not going to eat a lot of it, but it definitely adds to the flavor. So don't get beef that's, you know, without any fat. Um, then, uh, if I were going to follow the shahadi traditional recipe, I would probably only use one can of tomato, but since I like it Rodolfi style, I use two cans of tomato, and what I do is... Um, and this also, Lauren's family taught me, is to use the juice, actually, from the can, let's see, without cutting yourself, um, to, you're going to actually use this to boil um, the grape leaves after you roll them and make them. We use, let's see, whole peeled plum tomatoes. You get all the juice and the tomato and the seeds and everything, and it just seems to work better. A friend of my mom's, Marguerite Pepe, taught me how to make pasta fazool. She only used the whole peeled tomatoes, and I thought, oh, God, you know, big chunks of tomato, you know, yeah. when you're 12 years old, you're like, ooh, but it was so it, good. It, they cook and down. And you can smell it, too. Yeah, it's just something about it. I don't know. I wouldn't vary. We've already varied, and it hasn't worked. Somehow. So I, I keep a little of the juice in here, and I pour it right in my beef, and then I might not use this entire second jar because if I were going to make a double batch, I would probably use three at the most. So I might only use half of this jar depending on, I don't know, my mood at the moment, I guess, or how tomato I'm going to want them today, something like that. Who doesn't love a recipe where you can just make it however you feel? So I will take about half of these. You can take the little stems off the top if you don't like that, you know, because they are whole peeled, right. peel them off. They'll just cook out. Throw them back. They cook out. Yeah. Mostly they cook out. If you don't like them, you, you sit. You can spend all the time in the world you want on these. Okay. So, you got your tomatoes in there. You got your beef in there. Um, hugely important, fresh parsley. Here's a bunch that you would get in the store. It's flat leaf, curly leaf. I Whatever think flat you have. leaf actually has more flavor than curly. Curly has been um, developed to be curly. Yeah, curly and flat is more of an heirloom. Not it's an heirloom okay. variety, but it's it's an older seed. It has more flavor. It's used more for seasoning than garnishing. Curly parsley has been developed really to garnish plates. Amy does have a technique, being a chef that she is, about how to shave parsley mm -hmm. without having to. This what is how the new kids on. that come work for me do it. <laughs> and I quickly tell them not to because it's wasteful. But when you've got to make do this much parsley and you're at home, you want to get this part over with. Because rolling is really what I've experienced today. That takes the longest. So yep. just take your knife. Wow, that's interesting. And you kind of scrape off the leaves. There are still some big seed uh, stems in there, but here we've got about half a bunch of parsley. 
So Ellen told me that she likes to put it in the Cuisinart, which is another sa time saver. Another time saver. Cuisinart. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oops. Give it a pulsey pulse. Yeah, I, I would go so ahead. So Rachel Ray. Is that what she does? Who's Rachel Ray? <laughs> Go ahead, a, little, a little more. I chop it right. I chop it pretty finely. Great. All right. So that's probably maybe enough. Not not quite. I like it really parsley e. So I like it green. It, you can't really overdo. Again, in my opinion, that's again part of the Italianness. If the shahadis were making this, they might say differently. They also um, roll a lot better than I do, which I mentioned earlier. Mm. Um, well, practice makes perfect. And if right. it's in your jeans, what can you do? Exactly. Which is why I gave up spaghetti. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next, um, we do use a little bit of rice. And I would probably use a quarter cup. This is a half cup. I don't like them very ricey at all, um, so I'm going to say maybe a tad more, and that's plenty. You can't really mess it up again. You can just wing it. Sometimes they might be a little more ricey than others, and it's completely okay. Um, next, we are going to use our garlic powder. Now, I say garlic powder because it's something that everyone has in their cupboard on their shelf. I mean, everybody has garlic powder. Um, you can totally use fresh garlic, which again, I have experimented with uh, in this recipe. Um, and I remember distinctly actually making a very garlicky batch because I used fresh garlic once and bringing them to a party at your old house, <laughs> which um, my friend Lauren, who taught me how to make these, was there and she was like, whoa, those are the garlic, <laughs> most garlicky grape leaves I've ever had. And I was like, oh, I think I use a lot of fresh garlic. Um, so again, after you make them for the first time like this, you can make them any way you want. And, you know, depends. So let's use a tablespoon, is that a, a teaspoon. teaspoon, about how we're looking. There's one tablespoon. Teaspoon. Teaspoon. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, Chef Amy. <laughs> There's two... I might even go three. I like a lot of garlic. And powder is much, three and a half, less. Um, yeah. Mm. Believe me. When you taste them later, you're, you're going to be like, oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Um, po powdered garlic is much less pungent and strong. So than you air on the side of caution when you're using granulated or powdered garlic? Not really. Know. I err on the side of dump it in. Yeah. <laughs> because... Um, it's not as it's not as strong, and honestly, it cooks for so long. And there's so much, it just it you can't mess them up again. So I think we have a little bit of everything. Maybe a little bit of salt. I am a little bit of a saltaholic. You don't really need any salt at all in this recipe because the grape leaves come brined, which means they have like a salt mixture that they're stored in, and so. When we open the jar and um, rinse them, I actually rinse them pretty well because there's too much salt and too much brine. Uh, and you in rinse each leaf individually? Right, because they come um, stacked and you want to uh, separate them and rinse them, so otherwise it would be too much. So we're ready to actually dive in. Um, this is it for just the mixture part. So you actually dive right in. And I was surprised when she was teaching me this that you don't cook the meat. I assumed, okay, we're going to have to have a saute pan, we're going to have to saute onions and garlic and cook the meat and then roll it in the leaves, but no, you start raw. Now, sometimes if this is a little juicy, I'll be like, well, maybe I could use a little more rice or not. I'm going to give a shot right here. Um, it's nice and fresh and green. Looks really, really healthy and good. It could almost be a tartare. <laughs> little crunchy mm -hmm. and this is um, I remember making them and not squeezing enough juice out and they're really juicy and runny 
and that's kind of messy. So I use most of the juice in there. And then you are going to pour a little water in there as well to boil them down. So we're really ready to start rolling. All right. Here, I have some leaves that we rinsed earlier. Sometimes I give it a nice sniff, make sure it's garlicky enough. <laughs> that's the Italian in me. We have our leaves. We love our big, giant, broad leaves. These roll really nicely. And what I um, tend to do, which Lauren's Aunt Barbara is better at, is I stuff too much in them, I think, which makes them um, squish out and then unroll. So you, you want to put a little dollop according to the size of the leaf. And then essentially, you're going to fold it like an envelope. So you take a side, and while you're folding, you're also kind of squishing together. Squishing together. Now, and Ellen, tell me about um, why you like these leaves. Which leaves these are grape leaves, and why you like them? Well, we love the Orlando grape leaves. This is actually a really well-rolled nice leaf. Can you um, throw it up in the air and it stays <laughs> together? Yes! Whoa! That's an Aunt Barbara approved leaf right there. Um, Orlando's, we have um, used many, many other brands, including, you know, um, ones from Europe and where, you know, these are made more often. And for some reason, we all kind of prefer these ones that are from California. They actually have a different shape to the leaf they are very tender and uniform and uh, papery without breaking. And they come out of the jar really whole without having pieces. Um, and they cook up deliciously and really tenderly. Flavor has a lot to do yeah, with it. Yeah, they right? do. And it's, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but maybe it's because we're American. We like American things. I don't know. <laughs> we can go with that. <laughs> but I have used many. And you can use any grape leaf. Sometimes um, they're just not going to be as tender, uh, we have found, as these Orlando grape leaves. And these grape leaves I had to order online because we can't find them anywhere in yeah. town. There are grape leaves that you can get in town, but they aren't the California-grown grape leaves of the uh, Orlando brand. At least not so. at this time. You can, um, it is, it's, a, it's not like an incredibly expensive item or, at no. all. I so if you knew someone that bucks. owned like a specialty kind of store like even if like um you asked i don't know if i'm allowed to say store Never. names or something like an al Ducci's or some mm -hmm. specialty type of store uh, hey can you stock these um they can order them it's not like a, a highly expensive item yeah. by any means it's not like you're asking them to it's just specific on the shelf. right so you want to try you want to give your yeah can i try yeah so these all feel pretty good i roll spring rolls See if I can roll grape leaves. Let's see, um, Chef Amy. Let's see how her rolling skills are. Is that about enough? Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, you start as low as you Ooh. can. How low can you go? <laughs> okay, now, oh, I'm gonna now start to the side already. Yep. You, it's like an envelope. And keep like packing it in while you're turning, and then pack it in. Yep. And the more you do it, the the, the tighter they get. It really is like just roll thousands of them and you become good at it. My husband, Sean, was horrible at it for a little while. And until then he said, if you want grape leaves for dinner, get over here and start rolling them. That's pretty much exactly right. <laughs> and he became, he's not much of a cook, but he'll definitely help me roll grape leaves because they, they're time consuming, but it's worth every single minute. So we put these in here, correct? Yeah. So, you, so you start rolling and you put them put in all the jar. tomato juices in this pot. Right, and you just stack them up, trying to keep them together nice and neatly. Yep, and that's about it. And you keep rolling until that's done. Yeah. And sometimes, Ellen, you run out of leaves, and what do you do right. with this? And I, um, the first, I remember the first time I ever made them, and um, Lauren was teaching me, and she said, if you have extra, throw it in there. You know, so if you get to the end of your leaves and you still have a little bit of meat left, you just, you know, break it apart and throw them in there. And, the, and vice versa. Say you run out of meat and you still have a few leaves, break them up, throw them in there. Because mm -hmm. it kind of ends up boiling all together, and they're still rolled together, but um, it ends up all the flavors flavor, blending, yeah. and by the time you get to the bottom and there's no more leaves left, believe me, you're still going to want to go, I'll take what's left and put it in a bowl and drink it. So, mm. 
So, so that's pretty much it. And there, and that's what your finished they product are. looks like. I'm we'll turn those off. Show the audience that. So these grape leaves have been on the stove for close to two hours, right? Yeah, they've been on simmering, and and typically you don't need to keep them on and quite see, that long. I definitely all nice do. and rolled tightly still. Nice job, L. I'm so happy. Um, um, at least an hour, twenty minutes, hour and a half. What you have to be careful of is um, that you want the meat and the rice to be cooked, and kind of the longer they simmer and and cook in there. The, the more tender the leaves become. And when you use the Orlandos, it doesn't take as long because they're already tender to begin with. But again, you can't really overcook them as long as you have enough juice. If you need more, you throw a little water in there and keep, and keep simmering. And so it really is like the perfect potluck meal because especially if you use a lovely La Crusade pot, which holds its heat, you don't leave that at your friend's house. <laughs> yeah. Because they're not <laughs> going to call you and tell you. Exactly. <laughs> you, can you can cook them at your house, turn it off, have them really, really hot, go to a party, keep them right on the counter for two hours, and they're still literally still going to be warm when you lift that lid up and it's time for people to eat. So it really is like the perfect potluck. Yeah, oh, well, that's why I've invited you to my parties. <laughs> well, thank you. And you're, you're somewhat entertaining. Oh, yourself. well, I try. <laughs> thank you. And I, I, I thank my, fam, my friend Lauren and her family for teaching me about literally 20 years ago. Wow. And um, I'm sorry if I've stolen your recipe and made it Italian. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's cook up some pasta. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a toast. What do you say? Let's have a toast and a taste. Okay, sounds good to me. Cheers. Thanks, Al. Mm -hmm. So thanks so much, Ellen, for coming and showing me and everyone else how to make your fabulous grape leaves. You're so welcome. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy excited. to share, honestly. The more um, grape leaves, the better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you'll have to come to my house or invite me to your next potluck and Absolutely. I'll bring the grape leaves. Yeah, that would be now, great. Now, what would you make to go along with it? Um, well, traditionally, I know um, the Shahadi family, who taught me how to do it, makes um, some tabbouleh, uh, it's uh, traditional Lebanese things, um, kibbe, other things with lamb, yeah. things I don't eat, but I certainly eat uh, tabbouleh, however. Well, I made you some salad, or I made all of us some salad today. I made tabbouleh with quinoa instead of Perfect. bulgur wheat, and it has some cucumber, tomatoes, mint, Parsley, garlic. Sounds great. Yeah, it's yeah. it's gonna be really good. And and that goes that pairs those, really well. Yeah, put the grape leaves over it. Mm. And some spinach and arugula salad with preserved lemon vinaigrette and feta cheese. Oh my god, that sounds amazing. So anybody hungry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well thank you so much, Ellen, You're for so coming welcome. here. It's it was my so pleasure. much fun. Thank you, studio audience. Thank you in TV Land. We'll see you all next time on Life of the Party.